The worst part about betrayal isn't the lies. It's the realization that the people you trusted the most were the ones who hurt you the deepest. I ran away from home not to escape my problems, but to escape the pain of being surrounded by the people who caused them. They called it teenage drama, but the truth was my life was about to become a whole lot more complicated than I could have ever imagined. The only time in life when hating everyone is a perfectly valid philosophy, and I'm fine is code for, I'm emotionally spiraling into oblivion, but please don't ask me what's a girl to do. My best friend and boyfriend betrayed me 14 years ago. My mom insisted I forgive them. I exposed her truth and now she's divorced. This incident dates back to when I was 17, still in high school. We were a close-knit group of three, Aurora, Rob, and me. Aurora and I have been best friends since diapers. Rob became our friend when we were six and seven, so we have known each other forever. Aurora, Rob, and I pledged to be lifelong friends, just like our parents. Rob and I started dating when I was 15. It wasn't just a teenage fling. We dated for two years and I was serious. At least I thought he was too. We planned on enrolling in the same college and then getting married. People used to call Aurora the third wheel, but Aurora and I were so close that Rob said he felt like the third wheel between us. Perhaps I was the extra wheel. I'll get into it eventually. When we were 17, Aurora got knocked up. She was so terrified that she locked herself in the school's washroom. I was horrified too when I saw those two pink lines. I asked her who the guy was, but she didn't say anything. All she did was cry and dread her parents' reaction. She tested twice in front of me to calm herself down. I asked her to see a doctor before telling her parents. I took her to the doctor and her pregnancy was confirmed. She was so scared of her parents that she kept it hidden for almost a month. That month was equally tough for me. I brought her supplements, ensured she had proper meals, got her snacks and juices, and lent her a shoulder to cry on. She confided in me about her fear, anxiety, and uncertainty. I was her only support, yet she wasn't willing to reveal the guy's name. Despite her keeping that a secret, I supported her through all means. I finally convinced her to speak to her parents before it became evident. She asked me to be with her when she told them. I agreed. It wasn't unusual for our parents to see us bailing each other out. Her parents thought it was one such matter. The moment she revealed she was pregnant, her parents called mine to share their distress. She didn't reveal the guy's name even in front of her parents. She cried so profusely that my parents asked her to calm down and give Aurora time to confide in them. Two days later, my mom told me not to visit Aurora so often and that I should focus on my studies instead of being a babysitter to my friend. This restriction wasn't like, Aurora is bad company for you because she was very protective towards her. A week later, I got to know why she was asking me to stay away from Aurora, not to protect me, but to protect her. That evening, I randomly showed up at Aurora's. There, I found Rob with his parents. Both Aurora and Rob were crying. Even my parents were present. As soon as my mother saw me, she rushed to me and asked me to go home. I asked her what was wrong. She said it was none of my business. Seeing me, Rob and Aurora both were astonished, and I instantly understood what was wrong. I screamed at them, The baby's Rob's! You both were fooling around behind my back! Then they both rushed to me and kept saying, we can explain. I said, no explanation. The truth is out and open. My boyfriend and my best friend are hooking up behind my back and my best friend is having his baby. My parents dragged me out from there because I was screaming so loud. I came home and locked myself up. I cried for days, curling up inside my bed. It was beyond heartbreaking. I trusted her blindly and supported her by all means in tough times while she was effing my boyfriend in her backyard. The worst part was everyone was so occupied with caring for the would-be mama that no one even thought about my pain. Surely Aurora and Rob tried to reach out to me, but I slammed the door in their face. I blocked both of them on all social media platforms. It was understandable for Aurora's and Rob's parents to not care about my heartbreak, but even my parents were least empathetic about it. My mom was like, get over it, be happy, your best friend is going to have a baby. You'll be a fun aunt of a cute little munchkin. She acted so delusional. I mean, my best friend is carrying my boyfriend's baby and she wants me to be happy about that. She said, oh, come on, don't spoil this for everyone. All of us are so happy to welcome the baby into our lives. Don't ruin that. It's not a big deal for Rob to sleep with your friend. It's very common in teenage years. Don't take it to your heart. 
I'm sure you'll soon find another loving boyfriend. She winked and said, more handsome and tall than Rob. My mental condition got worse. I couldn't place my finger on when this would have happened and how I couldn't see it coming. No one was there for me to confide in. My sister, who was 15 back then, was dating Aurora's brother, so she was definitely on her side. When I cried in front of her, she said, How could you not guess that Rob was the dad? You three are always together. If any of you two are having a baby, it has to be Rob's. So she also preached to me the same thing. Move on. Don't spoil our relationship with them. The school was the worst. Rob and Aurora had dropped out. Rob couldn't take the bullies, and Aurora dropped out for obvious reasons. I had no friends besides these two losers, and everyone in the school knew that I and Rob were dating. Then Rob made Aurora pregnant, and they both dropped out, leaving me at the mercy of the bullies. My family was more concerned about their friendship with Aurora's and Rob's parents than about my feelings. Dad was still better. He used to check on me sometimes, but Mom was the worst. She was supplying Aurora with handmade cookies while I was crying and sulking in my room. She belittled and laughed at my feelings. As her pregnancy grew, my condition became worse. It was just so difficult to see Rob taking Aurora for walks for checkups and for dates to ease her anxiety. My family asked me to look away from them and move on. I don't know how I could move on. I mean, they both were my neighbors. It was not only difficult, but impossible to not run into one of them at least once a day. On top of that, my family was constantly engaged in conversations about their baby. They called themselves the would-be grandparents. Yeah, our families had been close. If she was having a baby with anyone else, I would have shared the same happiness as them, but not anymore. My mental state went for a toss. It got so bad that on the day of my final exams at high school, I packed my bag to run away from home. I've been planning on this ever since their baby-making news came out. I was saving up for it. I had sold all my books, comics, gadgets, watches, and whatever little jewelry I owned. I told them I was going on a trek with my friends. My family was so done with my sulking that they didn't ask anything and said, sure, have fun. I left home, never to come back again. I went to the next town, lived in a hostel, and waited tables for a living. It was stressful, with immense uncertainty about the future, but I felt so much better than to be at home. After a month, my parents started contacting me, asking me when I would return home. I had changed my number. They emailed me. I blocked them from there, too. They used other email IDs to write me, so I told my sister that I was not returning home ever and asked them not to contact me. They were emailing me from other IDs, so I changed that, too. That was it. I don't know what they would do to find me. Living alone was not hunky-dory, but eventually I navigated— I waited tables for two years, then took up a receptionist job for another year, and lastly, landed a sales job that lasted for three years. I met my husband when I was working in sales. He was a marketing guy. We both connected over our troubled family issues. He lost his mom at an early age, and his dad married a teenage girl of his age and forced him to call their mom. Gaslighting and verbal abuse followed until he ran away from home. We had known each other for just a year when he said he wanted to fund my college education, which I could pay him back later. He wanted me to do better in life. I accepted his offer and went to college. I continued to work part-time during college to take care of my other expenses. I studied accounting and grabbed a decent-paying job right after my graduation. On my first day after work, he proposed to me and we got married a year later. We have a son now. Life is good. A month ago, we went to Disneyland, and there we bumped into my sister who was there with her family. She had married Aurora's brother and had a son with him. I hugged her son, and the moment was so surreal. I hugged my sister, and we cried. She hated me for ghosting her. She and her husband, Aurora's brother, both apologized for not supporting me enough. I said, let the bygones be bygones, and let's enjoy the trip. We all enjoyed it like a family. I exchanged contacts with her. She made me promise to stay in touch with her. Now she went home and told mom about bumping into me. She texted me that mom was asking for my number. I was still not sure if I wanted to get in touch with her. My husband advised me to make peace with my family and move on, so I gave the green signal to my sister about sharing my number. Just an hour later, I got a call from my mother. She was sobbing over the call. She relented her mistakes. She said she was sorry that I had to go through all of this. 
She said she was yearning to meet my grandchild. She's insisting me to visit home with my family. Well, I didn't say yes or no yet. I'm thinking what to do. Hey, pause for a moment. Would you care to support us? Like this video and subscribe for more. Now let's dive back into the story. Edit. I missed one important point. My sister was showing me pictures of my brother's children, and while scrolling through the gallery, I stumbled upon her family picture. It was Aurora and Rob. My sister told me Aurora and Rob got married four years after I ran away from home. They had two more boys apart from the first baby girl. I just smiled and said nothing. She wanted to say more about them, but seeing me not interested, she backed off. First, it's the unexpected pregnancy bombshell with Aurora crying in the school bathroom and you playing the supportive friend like it's your full-time job. Then comes the gut punch revelation. Your bestie's bun in the oven belongs to none other than your boyfriend, Rob. Oh boy, that's quite the revelation. But here's where the real drama unfolds. Your family, seemingly more invested in Aurora's baby shower than your broken heart. Your mom offering cookies to the mom-to-be while you're left drowning in the sea of betrayal and hurt feelings. And nothing says teenage angst like staging your disappearance act. Update on, hey guys, sorry for not updating this earlier. Let me start from where I left off. After a lot of contemplation, I went to meet my family. My parents hugged me and cried. Yeah, they apologized for neglecting my feelings. It was a bittersweet moment for us. My sister was there with her husband and kids. Her husband, Aurora's brother, also apologized to me and requested me to be in touch. It was so nice to meet them all. We all grew up together like a family. My brother, who was 10 when I left, is also married now and has a two-month-old infant. It felt so good to hold and play with my nieces and nephews. We went there for a two-day trip. The first day was so emotional and beautiful in its way. My parents met my husband and my son, who was so delighted to meet his grandparents. On the second day, I was casually chit-chatting with my sister, and my mom came in and said, See, I told you I knew you would find a better man than Rob. And see, you did find such a good husband. You unnecessarily blew up the entire situation. My sister gave her a look and asked her to stop, but who could stop her? She continued, Oh, that's okay. Celine's over her past now. Look how happy she is in her life. I said, Surely I am. She sat beside me and said, then why not make peace with the past, forgive everyone, and move on? I said, I did make peace with the past, and I have forgiven you all. She said she didn't mean them, but Rob and Aurora. She wanted me to forgive them and get into talking terms with them so that we could all hang out as a family like before. I said, why do you want me to do that? You guys still hang out with them without me. She said, it embarrasses them that you don't talk to their children, Aurora and Rob, but their children are so nice to my parents. I said, but your other two children, my brother and my sister, are nice to your friends. Be happy with that. Why bother me? She insisted that I forgive Aurora and Rob and become their friends again. I said, no way, and it is none of your business. She started preaching to me the importance of forgiveness and Jesus stuff. Then she said, Aurora wants to meet you and your husband. Can I call her for dinner? I said, if you do that, I'm leaving the house now and never coming back. At this point, my siblings also got pissed off at Mom, asking her why she told Aurora about my visit. In her defense, Mom said, Aurora's dad saw me through the window and he might have told Aurora and then Aurora called Mom and requested her to patch me up with them. I got so furious at her lame excuse that I stood up and went into my room. My sister followed me inside the room and said, Mom has a weird obsession with Aurora's family. I mean, yeah, they are all friends now from four decades, but the way mom cares to keep the friendship smooth, it looks so fishy now. I asked her what made her say so. She said, last year, she and her husband were going through turbulence in their relationship. My sister casually mentioned to mom that if her husband continues his gaslighting habit, she might divorce him. Mom lost her crap and said outrightly that there would be no divorce, whatever happens. Sister has to adjust even if he cheated on her because we cannot ruin their friendship. Sounds weird. Me and my sister looked back at the past and realized mom had always been like this. She always loved Aurora and her brother more than us. Back then, we never complained about this because Aurora was my best friend and her brother was my sister's boyfriend. Discussion over. We came back home. I almost forgot about this talk with my sister last week. My husband showed me a video where a middle-aged couple is making out at a bar. 
The couple is none other than my mother with Aurora's dad. Yes, it blew my mind. My mother's obsession with keeping a good relationship with them makes so much sense now. They can hang out anytime they want. My husband went to the next town, not my hometown, for a work trip, and there he saw them. He recognized that it was mom, but didn't recognize that the man was Aurora's dad. He recorded it to show me because there was no way I would have believed him without the video. After seeing the video, I was choking. I needed to spit that out, so I called my sister and asked her to come down the next day. She sensed it was urgent, and she rushed. I showed her the video, and she was equally shocked. My sister has not told her husband yet because he would be equally freaked out. Now we are at a fix of what we do. Do we tell Dad about this, or should we confront Mom and ask her to mend her ways? But wouldn't that be cheating on Dad again? It's getting complicated. Did not see that coming. Mom's playing footsie with Aurora's dad at the local watering hole. I mean, talk about keeping it in the family, right? Who knew your mom had such a penchant for scandalous rendezvous? And here we were thinking her idea of excitement was knitting on a Friday night. To tell or not to tell dad is the million-dollar question. Confronting mom might feel like stirring the pot, but hey, if she's dishing out the drama, she better be ready to eat her serving. Update 2. My parents are getting divorced. Yes, for obvious reasons. My sister and I spent weeks thinking about what to do. I at least could discuss it with my husband and vent out. But my sister's condition was worse. She can't even discuss that with her husband. Her anxiety and silence were spoiling her relationship. We had to do something. So we did what any other sibling in the world would do. We told our brother thinking he might come up with a better idea to deal with the situation. On seeing the video, he lost it. He went straight to mom and confronted her in front of dad. She denied it, and he rubbed the video on her face. I don't know if it was wise or foolish of us to involve him, but at least he offloaded our burden. Brother told us that he was pissed with mom all his life because she had been ignoring him in front of Aurora and her brother. He said he hated me and my sister because of our closeness with that family. But when he grew up, our closeness made sense, but mom's didn't. Dad and my brother almost barged into their house and showed the video to Aurora's mom, who broke down on seeing her husband making out with her mother. To simplify the matter to you guys, mom was sleeping with dad's best friend. Yeah, by then, everyone got to know the truth, including Rob and his parents. Dad and Aurora's mom became a team and grilled mom and Aurora's dad. We wanted to be neutral, but we couldn't after knowing that they had been fooling around ever since we were children. Initially, they claimed it started recently as a midlife crisis, but their stories were inconsistent. Dad threatened to throw her out of the house right away. Then they spoke the truth of cheating for over 25 years. Yes, they've been doing this under everyone's nose and no one ever suspected them. Dad tried to hold the fort for the sake of the family, but he grew miserable. One day he just showed up at my door, hugged me, and cried like a baby. He said now he understood what pain I must have gone through when my boyfriend cheated on me with my best friend. Mom did the same thing with Dad, sleeping with his best friend. It's terrible. It's like getting stabbed from both ends. Dad called all three of us, me, my sister, and my brother, for a meeting. He said he was sorry, but he could not forgive Mom and live with her anymore, pretending nothing happened. Mom was telling him the same thing she told me. Forgive and move on. Dad was proceeding with a divorce, and before that, he wanted to inform us. All three of us lent our support to him, saying that we are with him whatever he decides. When Mom got to know that Dad was going to serve her, she blacked out. She pleaded with him to give her one last chance for the sake of the family. I was not present at the time, but my sister was, and she gave Mom a piece of her mind. It was one huge drama in the family. Dad ultimately got her served and moved out. A similar story happened with Aurora's parents. Her mom has filed for a divorce and she has also moved out of the house. So in my house, mom is alone, and in her house, her dad is alone. They might just move in together, who knows? Bless in disguise for them, who knows? They both might have been waiting to live together anyway. I'm out of this. I have my own family to care for. These divorces have been rough on my sister because both sides of her family are affected. She and her husband are going through tough times. I hope the relationship doesn't suffer in between all this and they sail through this rough patch. Thanks for all the love. I'll update the thread if anything develops. Talk about shaking up the family tree. 
Your mom and Aurora's dad were caught in the act of clandestine canoodling for over a quarter of a century. I mean, talk about dedication to the affairs game. They were practically the Bonnie and Clyde of infidelity, sneaking around behind everyone's backs like a pair of undercover agents. But hey, at least your dad and Aurora's mom are taking charge and kicking those cheaters to the curb. Divorce might be messy, but it's better than living a lie, right? As for you, well, it sounds like you've got your circus to run with your own family now. Time to leave the drama behind and focus on keeping your ship afloat. After all, you've had enough of family fireworks to last a lifetime. Thoughts? How would you have handled the situation? Let's conclude the story shortly. Life is a roller coaster and mine has been a wild ride. The betrayals, the heartache, the running away, the finding love, the family drama. It's been a whirlwind. But through it all, I've learned to be strong, to stand up for myself, and to choose happiness. My parents are divorced, and while it was a painful process, it ultimately brought them both peace. They are both happier now, and that's what matters. My sister is still navigating the fallout from all of this, but she is strong and will come out of it. As for me, I have my husband and son. They are my world, my everything, and I'm finally at peace with my past. I still think about Aurora and Rob sometimes, but I don't hate them anymore. I understand that they made mistakes, and I've forgiven them. I'm not sure if we will ever be friends again, but I'm not holding on to the anger anymore. I've learned that forgiveness isn't about them. It's about me. It's about freeing myself from the pain of the past. I'm grateful for the journey. It's made me who I am today. I'm a survivor, a fighter, and a loving wife and mother, and that's all that matters. After experiencing the full journey of our story, we'd love to hear your thoughts. How did the story resonate with you? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay blessed. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next story. Thank you.